Hey, on today's Leslie and Lisa show, we have a really fun guest. Wendy McClendon Covey is here and it's going to be the best. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Leslie and Lisa show. Hey, welcome to the Leslie and Lisa show, the show where we're going to talk about anything and everything because nothing is off limits. Hi, Lise. Hi, Les. You know what I love that almost at every top of the show while I'm saying, hey, welcome, you're just like jamming those shoulders. Because it's become like a song for me. Like, like you're <laughs> the thing that you say at the top all the time. It's got like a rhythm to it. I'm not even it. kidding. And you have sexy shoulders. So and why not fucking shimmy them? Thank you. I'm so um, sorry. I cursed already. You Dang already it. did it. You already ruined everything. Shoot. Shoot. No sponsors for us. <laughs> Um, so our guest is already in the waiting room and I do not want to keep her waiting long, but I do want to ask you a question. Yes, ma'am. So we already had a topic planned, but I'm surprising you with a different one because while I went to get my hot drink because it's freezing in the house, um, I read a little snippet of one of the Peloton instructors who was, this, I know I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying she said that Can you tell that Lisa's obsessed with Peloton. I can't. Hey, anyways, go ahead. She said that like if you're uncomfortable while you're exercising, it is preparing you for facing uncomfortable situations in the world. So it makes you a stronger person. And she said, "Listen to me, you bitch." <laughs> she said, Such a bitch. She said, "Even if you're not an exercise person." Everyone should be doing something that makes you, you uncomfortable, whether it's reading a book you never really wanted to read or taking a class you never wanted to take. I look at my bank account. Makes me uncomfortable every day. <laughs> I check in every day. Has it gone up? No, of course not. I haven't been working. Why would it? Okay, anyways, go ahead. Although I do get, you know, those, you know, those like 12, 13 cent, you know. Residuals. residuals they add up. Oh my God. That okay, go ahead. Um, that's it. I wanted to ask you if you're doing anything that challenges you or makes you uncomfortable during this time, but I think you just answered it. Okay. I mean, listen, no, you are absolutely correct. And um, we all do have to do that. And frankly, as Dr. Emily Sicking, our resident gynecologist, mm -hmm. told us that, it, you know, every three days, you got to do, I mean, she didn't want us to be uncomfortable, but every three days, you've got to do something. You've got to do a little exercise, do a little meditation, do a little kegel. Right. Ah, I'm kegeling. Good we need girl. to make a little sign that just says kegel. Kegels. I agree. Kegels. Okay. Ooh, let's ask Wendy if she kegels. Oh, that's a great does. question. That could be the first thing yeah. we ask her. Should I let her in? Let's do it. Just let her in. First thing. She's going to be like, what are these two women talking about? I know that the first question they ask me is if I kegel. Hi. Hi. God, she's beautiful. <gasps> <laughs> oh my God, already? Wait, I know you were a cheerleader in high school because oh, yes. I was listening to your most recent podcast with your sister and she was saying how you were like Bridget Bardot, hot oh. cheerleader. Okay, that, that was crazy. No, she's not. I'm telling that was you, crazy. I agree with her. I, I was agree. a cheerleader. That's it. The yeah. rest of it, I was a, a wiry haired, you know, 80s girl with shimmering shell pink lipstick from CoverGirl and a teal goopy eye. Oh, yes. by the way, you know? yeah, join us. Now, I sometimes had the <laughs> shimmer, but mine was mocha ice. Oh. I don't know who made it. Because listen, by oh. the way, there's so much to talk to you about, Wendy. Yes. We're all the same age. We're all 80s yeah. girls who grew up in LA. Well, Which is why I'm wearing this, by the way. It's not an homage to the Goldbergs. It's an homage to you because I know you're such an 80s kid. Um, it's an homage to your sexy shoulder. Well, uh, it's an homage to your beauty. That's what it is. That. Cheers You're saying, to you. uh, here's a little gift for you. Here you go. Right? Happy holidays. <laughs> You're hot. Okay, wait. So we were talking at the top of the show. I don't know how it came up. So my first question is to you. Um, do you Kegel every day? Do you do your Kegel? Do I Kegel? Um, yeah, actually, you're welcome. I stopped so I could come and do this podcast. Thank but you. I've got like, you know, it's Tuesday. It's Kegel day. You know, I, by the way, you're doing do it right now as we speak. You yeah, she do doesn't. It. Wendy does Kegels for a whole day. She blocks out yeah. a Kegel day. I, I, I take water breaks and lunch breaks, and then it's I really hit it hard. Amazing, yeah. mm -hmm. love it. 
I think it's uh, <laughs> hilarious, though, that you would take a lunch break or a water break because you can still Kegel while you're eating or drinking. I can't. Oh, you, you're you not I a multitasker. Can't. I can't. I need total <laughs> concentration. I'm not a multitasker. Lisa. I love it. <laughs> okay, so, Wendy, we we literally have so many questions for you that it's uncomfortable. Because and, you... and also, we are so honored that you joined us today that you were like sure i'll be on the show it's i'm anyway. honored that you asked me are you kidding wow i get to talk to cool ladies yeah oh, i love me. it what are you talking about well and you saying that just drives our point home that we were like so you know we prep for the show as you do and we were chatting and i said i just feel like wendy is uh us. We're just all the same people and we should all be best friends. So we just need to ask her the questions we would want to know of our best friend, not right. of some highfalutin actress. Fancy, famous <laughs> well, girl. Well, since so I'm not that, then yes, let's just go back to the first line of questions. Perfect. Yeah. Right, so wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the stupid, crazy question that is in line with what the Kegels that we were talking about right off the top okay. of the show. Okay, so crazy question I guarantee you've never been asked. So you are our age. When you go in for your, we recently had a fabulous um, OBGYN on the show. Who might air after, after this. I, I was just going to say, she may air after this interview, but everybody will, she was fantastic. Her name is Dr. Excellent. Emily Sicking. Okay. Um, so I had said to Emily, you know, every year that I go in for my yearly pap smear, I automatically always have a rectal exam right afterwards. Like, and I was like, do you do that? Or is that I, just my gynecologist? Who and I do it? not. My gyno has never put his finger in my butt. You? What happens that to That happened you? once. And that's because I went to a new gyno last year. Um, and I did not know it was coming. Oh, no. <laughs> so it was like, hey, <laughs> hey. Oh. Hey. hey, how come he and gave yet, you no warning? Or she, I don't and know. And yet, if she had warned me, I would have jumped off the table and run out of the room. So it's, I guess it's good that she yeah. did that. Right. But um, I, you know, I'm sorry. I hate, I know I got to do it, but I hate it, hate it, hate it. Hate it. All of that stuff, it's like so traumatizing for me for some reason. I know. Is it's it like, really? Even it now? It really is. I really am like, I... I would rather not know anything than go and do this. Yeah. And it's, it's and what does it take? 20 minutes? At the most. I, I oh, seriously at the most. hate it. At the most. Well, I, it's, listen, it's an uncomfortable position. You're basically naked with a paper plate over, or a tissue over you. Yeah. A paper um, plate. Or a paper plate. Um, so it is. It's uncomfortable. And it's, yeah. I, I know that nobody's ever asked you such a odd question, but we were oh, just but talking about it. And I was like, I don't know why I get them every year. And Lisa was like, I've never had anybody do that. And Emily, frankly- I didn't say I've never had anybody do that. do that. I said I've never had my well, gynecologist do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that takes us somewhere completely different, hey, Lisa. Okay, yeah. So Wendy. Yes. You're like a hometown girl. First of all, I don't know if you know, but we're all SoCal born and raised. Okay, love it. But you, and, and also Leslie and I both grew up in the San Fernando Valley and have not left. Magnificent. I did a little stint in New York City for five years, but I came right back to the Valley. But you grew up it. in Bellflower. I was born there. Okay. And we moved seven miles away to Long Beach, Long and I've Beach. stayed there ever since. So even through all the work, even through the groundlings, all of it, you stayed in Long Beach. Yes, I'm here right now. I, I am, we both of us are so enamored with this because we know yeah. so few people who are in this business. Yeah. And, but especially like Leslie and I live close to everything. Mm -hmm. You do not. So no. what that choice is because. You know what? I just feel so connected to this area and I can't leave. I love it. And my parents are three miles away. My mother-in-law is, you know, seven miles away. Everybody's nearby. I have the same, a lot of the same friends that I grew up with. I just, I feel like I am so rooted here. I can't even consider going someplace else. Wow. I mean, I would say that you and I, you and I feel the same way, Lisa. Absolutely. I, mean, I, that's I it. just can't. I drive through my old neighborhood and I'm like, I, 
what if I bought like a group of houses here or something? Like, I just, I can't leave. I don't know what it is. I feel very tethered to this place. I mean, my look, sister grew up and left. Interesting. But and I just moved out of state, gone. actually. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. But you just couldn't yeah. fathom it. Can't do it. And your husband. Well, also, I was just going to say, you did you meet your husband in high school or I think in college, maybe it said? In college, yes. <laughs> in but, community college. I love that. Yeah. Why, why did you say you know, like you're both tethered to right. this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why did you say community college with that um, that air of disgust? Um, you know, it just took me a long time to get through college. Oh, really? It took us both a long time because I didn't know why I was going. You know, I graduated high school in 87. So back then it wasn't like a given that I'm so glad college. you're I'm so glad you're saying this because mm -hmm. I graduated high school in 86. I and graduated also, in 89. And so having grown up out here, I, you know, I know people, the kids in 10th grade and everybody's talking to their child about like, so what are we thinking for college and all this kind of stuff. That conversation never happened in my house. It was never, no. I guess it was a given in my head that I was automatically going to go to college, but it was never discussed. It was, nothing was ever discussed about actually leaving the state and going out to somewhere oh, else. No. Going to college. And now I people mean, drive no. their kids all over the world or fly them all over the yeah, country. To check, to out colleges. check out every fucking college. Yes. Like and that. that is such a crock of shit. Agreed. I mean, everybody has been sold such a bill of goods about what college is going to do for you. And I'm sorry, it is not for everyone. And, you know, most of us are pretty unremarkable. So saying, okay, my, my idiot son that can't wipe his own ass or make his own bed, let's send him to Syracuse right. as a freshman. Right. Let's, let's bribe our way into some big college because that's important to us as the parents. Right. We want to be able to tell people that's where they're going. And then they can waste all our money and flunk out and sleep through classes. I mean, that's 100%. what I see happening. I yeah. have already groomed my child to understand that we will be so proud if he chooses to go to a community college for two years huh. to get his undergrad stuff done. And then, and then yeah, you can have figure the out what school you want to go to. You have a choice yeah. of anything at that yes. Um, it's yeah, funny. I mean, why would you put that pressure on a kid whose brain hasn't even finished developing it? Correct. Absolutely. And listen, you nothing know? to say against people who do and they know what they want and they go for it. Listen, mm -hmm. I didn't, by the way, I haven't even invested in a 529, which is that fund that you're supposed college to put fund. money into. It's a college fund that you're supposed to put money into, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. It's only used for higher education. And I had said to my ex-husband, you know, Let's find other ways to do this because I don't want to put all this money in there. And what if they don't, what if our children end up not being the kids who just automatically go off to college and they seek some other kind of path? But Leslie, yeah. not yeah. to, I mean, this needs to be about Wendy, but excuse me for a minute, Wendy. Fine. But Leslie, yes. I think this is all total bullshit coming from you. Why? Because... Private I, school is so important to you for fucking middle school that I can't imagine you're not going to be one of those moms that does what every mom does that no, Wendy does explain. And I, I love you dearly. Okay. And yes, of course, I'll talk college. Of course, my child, my children will most likely go off to college like I did. But just in case they choose a different, what if they chose a vocational school? I would you be know. okay with that? Yes, I would. I would. If it really... Yes, because ultimately, yeah. I swear, I really do just want my children to be happy. And Wendy's like, this is fucking boring. Anyway. No, so it isn't. I'm fascinated because I, I, I don't have kids, but everybody around me has kids. And I've seen this so much. And I've seen the parents stressing out so much about this. So I refuse. Continue. I refuse. Wendy, I'm in school now. I never graduated. I went to two yeah, quarters of UCLA. now. And okay. I'm in school now to hopefully maybe get a degree one day. Good for I, you. Yeah, but my parent, and like, I just, my, my brother did graduate from college and he, but I don't think it had anything to do with his career. Like, I just think it's, it's having balls and knowing what you want and all of those. And a lot of that shit came for me from life. 
Mm-hmm. And I just, what you said, Wendy, about it not being for everyone, I don't think it is. It's yeah. not. And it has yeah. no bearing on your level of intelligence either. Mm-hmm. Some of the smartest That's people exactly we know right. did not go to college. You yeah, know, absolutely. they're full of life. Right? So. Yeah. And I mean, setting your kid up in a business might be a better path yeah. for them. Sure. We're saying, okay, you know what? Go to go to community college for a little bit. Show some promise in something. Yes. Show us that you can follow that schedule. Yes. And get good grades. And then we can transfer you. But you're not going to waste my money. Yep. And you're not going to stress me out trying to get your lazy ass into SAT prep courses on a Saturday. Oh shit. That's you're right. I have, by the way, I have put I've done a little, I've done that shit right now, just trying to get in my kids into middle school private. Yep. Oh in my racket. god! I'm not gonna lie. You're absolutely right. Total racket. However, but yeah. my children are luckily getting a wonderful education. Anyways, who gives so it? is mine. Yeah. Oh, private school is amazing. Huh? I mean, public school is amazing. You know, yeah. I have. No, I yeah. know, I know, I know. I just like messing. I'm up. a public school girl myself. Yes. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Now, what is, what are you getting your degree in? I don't or know yet. Right now, okay. I'm just getting. I just took uh, poli sci and stats. Hello. And now I'm moving on to, um, it's so funny. I have to take a public speaking class. <gasps> you're going to get an A. Dude, I, you might have just passed the stats class, but you're going to get an A now. They'll make up for each other. How funny would it be if I don't pass it? Um, oh, man. Yeah. You, so I, you're going to have to really try hard not to, to pass. not pass. Yeah. So I yeah. have to take that. And then I think I'm going to take a psych class at the same time, but um, I don't know what I want to major in yet, either history or, or psychology. I think even at 49, yeah. you don't know what you want to do. No, with exactly. All right. I, okay. I, yeah. You don't have to know. Thank you, Wendy. So Wendy, it'll hit you. just be open. It'll, I am. I'm, yeah. I'm so when, open. When, when you were at community college and then you went off to Long Beach State, did you, did you make, did you know you wanted to be an actress? Were you involved in all of that in high school? I knew from the time I was, from my first memory, that's what I wanted to do. But my parents, when it was time to say, Hey, this is what I want to do. My parents were like, Oh no, no, absolutely not. So I spent a lot of time not knowing what I was going to do and trying other things. And I was never happy. I, I always felt very lost because I, I knew what I, what I felt I was born to do. Wow. And I was not able to honor that really. And, you know, I tried to, because I lived at home until I was 26 and got married. Okay. So I would try to oh. sneak off to auditions and stuff like that through drama log or this and that. And sometimes I would book and sometimes I would just drive right past the audition site because it looked sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't till I got married and my husband said, just try it, just try it, you know? So that's what got me going. God. So you were married like, when you went and joined the Groundlings. You are already married. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. I so, love that you moved, by the way, you moved out of your parents' house and in with your husband. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it is. That's spectacular. spectacular. Yeah. Very old school. Oh, it's but. so sweet. And yeah. very smart, by the way, because I moved in with Russ um, five months after we started dating. Oh, wow. And then became a f- disaster terrified that he would never ask me to marry him and it almost ruined our entire relationship oh wow yeah so oh you did God. it right girl you did it right you know i think there's just something to be said for that because you know when you cohabitate you know the dew falls off the rose shall yeah. we say <laughs> yep too much reality going around you know right um so I never lived with a roommate. I never did any of that. Right, because you lived I with your parents. Like. Yeah. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and I'm about to move my parents back in with me because really? it just seems like the right thing to do. Wow. Well, do you? Said, we've I, talked about it. Yeah. My I, was, I was listening to the last, oh, your last wow. podcast. You had said at that time you hadn't really seen them much, though they live literally around the corner from you. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, that's been really tough. Um, 
because of COVID and everything. And, and like, I really have to be careful because we're working at the Goldbergs and yeah. we get tested all the time. And if, if I can't work, nobody gets to work. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, right. I can't get the stipples. I can't get a headache. You know, right. I can't, yes. I have to be yeah. there. So, and you know, they're, they're older and whatever, but it, it's just been really hard not seeing them, not having eyes on them, or at least just not having the option. Um, and so my husband and I are talking about like, what if we bought a compound and just moved everybody in? And like, if they can have their own little house yeah. His mom could have their so own like house. You're, like, you're together, every, but ev you're together, yeah. but everybody has their autonomy and can sort of do their own exactly. thing. Exactly. I think it's brilliant. I think it's yeah. very smart. It's no a one's little lonely. We're, they're right there. You know, we're, so I don't know. It, it's so like a McClendon just, Covey That's not going to happen soon, but we can, we're looking. It's <laughs> not going to happen soon? Um, just because that's kind of a hard thing to orchestrate. Yeah. You know? So if I, we... If we found something, I know we would have to like fit it with certain. You know what? I got. I'm going to start looking for land in Long Beach. Okay. Like town. Are you okay. I guess Lisa and I are joining you. Yeah. No. Right. No. I just want to help. Yeah. I, we're going to have room for everybody that needs to crash. Amazing. Okay. I seriously think that's a great idea. Yeah. Obviously, you you had said, Wendy, that you have been very busy. You're, you're shooting the Goldbergs. Concurrently, you were shooting Reno 911 as well, right? Yes. God, you were yes. busy in COVID. That was, yeah. So a lot of testing, a lot of, um, I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky that I got yeah. to do those things, you know, and, uh, I was, you know, listen, I was going insane. So I, I need, need to be busy. I'm someone that needs to have somewhere to go. <laughs> well, that leads to the question that yeah. clearly, so Leslie and I started this because we were bored as hell and mm -hmm. needed something to do. And now we know, so you, so let's talk about your podcast for a second, yeah. okay. which is called Generation Ripe. Right. And it is about teenagers who are over 40. Right. <laughs> Uh, people yeah. around our age who are still creative and still mm -hmm. doing all that stuff. Young at heart. Young at heart. Who don't feel their age. Right. right. Necessarily. Yeah. And is this something that you had always wanted to do or did it, did it start? Was it born out of COVID? Right. Um, it is something I've always wanted to do because I want to change that conversation a little bit around aging and I hear it so much working in this industry and it's such a bore agree yeah, and it's also not true i was just gonna say and it's also a bunch of bullshit especially right. yeah. the women because we get to a certain age and then we're done yeah it's like no you get to a certain age and you're done if you think you're still gonna play an ingenue sure mm -hmm. you're done if you don't embrace the fact that, you know, maybe you're in your crazy old lady phase and maybe that's way more fun anyway. Yeah, by the way, you know? I want, you know, when I got into this, I got into this business when I was 21. Uh -huh. And um, I remember for a long time, all I did was lie that I was older than I actually was because A, I knew I was never gonna, I was never the ingenue. I was always the best friend, the neighbor, the sister, the crazy, whatever. Um, so I would go audition for roles and it would be a girl in their thirties. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm 30. Uh -huh. And it was like, no, you're not. And I was like, no. And I was always trying to be older than I was. And the funny mm -hmm. thing is then you hit a certain place where you're like, all right, I'm in my stride. I'm happy to be exactly the age that I am. Right. And the irony is that I was looking forward to getting older and being able to embrace the, you know, I was in high school in drama, whatever, creating all the wrinkles on my face with dark right. pen. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm finally of the age where I have all of those wrinkles, although uh -huh. I do keep them with some Botox, but, but I'm all right. like ready to play those character roles and be my age. And of course, now everything seems like it's ironically skewing so young, at least for all the things that I'm going out for. So, but there is like, as a character actor, the older you get, the more seasoned you are, it, it's better. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I totally believe that. And, um, oh, I had such a good point I was going to make and it escaped oh, sorry, me. Sorry. And I interrupted you on such a No, point. not at all. Not at all. Um, 
but yeah, like I, okay, so I'm 51 now and I don't feel any different than I did at 21, except I have more confidence now. I yes. can laugh at myself more. I know now that everybody's not looking at me and pointing and judging me, or if they are, I don't give a shit anyway. They're not, yes. my you know, so why not keep going out and trying things? I'm still ready to like go down in a shark cage or, um, I, I'm trying to manifest that by the way. So I keep, are you really, you I want, want to do that? I really do. Oh I God. Really do. I'm so claustrophobic and I yeah. hate being underwater. So yeah. that is something uh, I never want to do. I just, okay. have well, no I will, uh, note to self. <laughs> yeah, don't invite me. I will me not to send that. you that Evite. <laughs> Lisa's not invited to Shark Week. <laughs> Wow. So we're like, I, I still love could... going to concerts. I still love going to see, you know, live shows and whatever. Like, I don't feel any different. It's just now I have a little more money. I can do what I want. I'm not self-conscious. So where, where's that tribe? What can we go and do? What kind of, you know, mischief can we make? So I just, I'm so tired of that whole, oh, Hollywood just throws you aside. Well, it doesn't. No, nope. no one's thinking about you that much. Right. You're putting yourself aside. You're, you're putting yourself on the bench. You know, but I, I have to say, I need a little of that because I agree with you. It, you haven't been thrown aside. You still got, you've still got so much to give. I know I have so much to give, but the irony is that the older I've gotten, I'm more insecure now in terms of really? this business. I get okay. more nervous. Um, um, I second guess myself all the time. Like even with auditions, especially now when we're having to self tape everything. I, I mean, hate self taping. It's the worst. I hate it. I send, I'll send things to Lisa or my girlfriend, Julie. And I'm like, does this look okay? Like I can't even judge myself anymore. Well, I'm so this is a conversation, Wendy, that Leslie and I keep having off, off of this show because right. she does still get super insecure about this stuff. And it's so funny because mm -hmm. I do watch all her self tapes and she's so fucking talented. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then I am where yeah, you not are. Not a job, but that's okay. I am, but you know, that doesn't mean anything that has nothing to do with you. Um, uh, and I am where you are, Wendy, although ex except for the work and the money, um, where I, I am totally like, whatever. I'm, I clearly have been invited to stay in this business now for 22 years right. and I will, my auditions are, I do the best I can. And if I don't no. get it, I know it's not because people hate me and I move on. Yeah. So I'm with and you that I've gotten to that point where it, it feels better and let, we need to get, we need to slap Leslie around and get her there. Leslie, this is, this is a little nugget I'm going to give to you. Ooh, okay. I love some nuggets. 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 You know you're talented. That's not up for debate. You're doing your self tapes. Lisa, who's not going to pull punches with you, is telling you you're good. So here's the thing. Here's the mindset that maybe you might want to get into. Who cares if you get it or not? You're going to do your self tape and you're going to send it in, but you're going to do it the way you want to do it, not the way you think they want to see it. People get so bored looking at these damn self tapes. Hmm. Surprise them. No one knows what they want from the dessert cart until they pass the dessert cart by. You can change somebody's mind about how a character can be played. So wow. you do it the way you want to do it. And if you're on the right track, they'll redirect you. But pop out for them. That's a great right. nugget. That's a great, that is a great nugget, Wendy. And just, just think of it as, this is my fun little thing I'm going to do today. I'm going to make it good because I'm taking the time to do this. I'm not going to worry about what I look like, my inflection, whether I have the sides in my hand. They, listen, they decide within seconds anyway. You're absolutely whether they want to keep watching. So do it the way you want to do it. God. That's all. Thank you. That's Thank all. you. Okay, now you can leave. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. All right, later. <laughs> That's brilliant, though. Back to my kegels. <laughs> that <laughs> that is that's a brilliant nugget. I love it. Yeah. I Thank love you it. So much. You're welcome. Right, let's, so Let's talk, let's talk about the Goldbergs. It's okay. such a phenomenal show. First of all, I can't Thank believe you. it's been on for eight seasons. I can't either. 
It's flown by. It's shocking. And I want you to know that I honestly hadn't, I don't, I don't find myself watching a lot of television at all. If I do Mm -hmm. check into things, it's usually trashy TV, a la the housewives and the bachelorette and all the reality shit that gets me, that turns my brain off and gets me through life. However, knowing that you were coming on the show, I immediately was like, all right, I'm going to go watch the Goldbergs. And in the second episode, I had already started crying. Every episode I cried. Because, I mean, maybe it's just because, first of all, Lisa will tell you, I'm not exactly um, in line with thinking I'm a smother, but I guess I'm a smother. Okay. She's a smother. Yeah. I'm a smother. Um, and then just uh, that episode of you having to, and it just touched me, like having to come to terms with that your children are getting older and maybe they don't want to be smothered and loved and you know you having to like literally scare your little son so that you can just get a hug or he'll cuddle with you in bed i just i know that's taking you back eight seasons but i literally crying well i'm i'm thrilled to hear you say that it's the it's the most fun i've ever had doing anything i love 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 my job it's been such such a blessing and i love those kids and I love, I just love everything about it. And I mean, I don't have, like I said, I don't have my own kids. So um, to, to put myself in the mindset of being a mom and having those feelings, oh my God, I have so much respect for my own mom now. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh your, my God. Would you have said, was your mom a smother at all? Hell yes. He was. Yes. And that was back, you know, in the era of pay phones. Right. Oh yeah. So you didn't you didn't know where your kid was most of the time. You had to you couldn't track them. Couldn't, exactly. You couldn't track them. We had the ability to sleep at a boy's house and tell our moms we were sleeping at our best friend's house. Did you do that? I did that when I was now here's what I will say. I was older. I was 19, but still living with my okay. parents, but sure, they still sure. expected to know where I was. Yeah. And, I, and I don't even know if you know this story less and I'll make it very quick, but I was sleeping at my boyfriend's house and I called my mom and I said, I'm at my best friend's house. And she goes, Lisa, cut the shit. I know where you are. It's not a big deal. Let's all be adults and move on. Oh, <gasps> wow. I love that. Go so that, that was a big oh, moment for me. <laughs> I think the, the closest I got to that was calling my mom and saying, I am drunk and I cannot drive home. So I'm just going to sleep at wherever, whatever house I was at. Cause I chose to just be smart. But she was probably very proud yeah. of that phone call. Yeah. I'm sure she wasn't, yeah. you know, believe me, there were other times where I got home and was wasted, but didn't admit it. Right. Anyways. Um, well, Wendy, I so love that. that. After eight years of mothering these kids, and I know this is probably a corny question, but on some level, do you feel like a parent to them? I do feel that way a little bit. Like I do feel very protective of them on social media and whatever, or, you know, I know their parents, I know their pets, I know everything. And it is a trip um, when I go back and watch old episodes and I'm like, watch them grow up. Oh, Oh, watch they were babies they were little kittens and you know my my um tv baby you know the youngest one yeah his first job and they recast they fired another kid and brought him in because they had a general meeting with him and he was just such a an interesting little guy they're like oh no this this is him this is him (sighs) He does jump off the screen, he I will does. say. He's extraordinary. Yeah. And uh, Haley, my, my daughter on the show, like the, someone told her, yeah, you should probably go get a TV show if you want to be in the music business. It would make, us, it, would make <laughs> it easier to promote you. <laughs> she sent in a self-tape. Oh. And, and she booked it. Like, it doesn't happen like that. No, no it does not. Fun, you know? So, um yeah it's it's been a trip and i i love it very much and you know so I, i'm actually sad when i'm not at work oh i'm sure because that's I, I just on a, are you on a, like a holiday hiatus yeah, yeah yeah which by the way is very needed i i won't miss anybody for the next two weeks. <laughs> right exactly <laughs> you've been working really hard i'm but, sure you know 
All right, so we're back. We froze, but now we know not to leave when we freeze, so we're back. It's going to be a little, little snippety snip. It happens. It it's our lives happen. now. It is. I was just going to say, this is our life on Zoom. Yeah. So, <laughs> Les, I wanted to talk to Wendy for a second about her patterns and clothes making and cross stitching, if that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't cross stitch. Oh, wait, there was a cross, you Instagrammed a cross stitch the other okay, day. Okay, someone made me something. Oh! They sent it to me, yes. Okay, was my bad. the ham slacks thing? It said ham slacks? Maybe. Yes. ham slacks? Oh, that's, that's from um, Bridesmaids. That's an outtake. Which where, we need uh, to discuss. You know, I just quit Bridesmaids. Yeah. I mean, oh God, it's so good. <laughs> Did you have so much fun? No. Yeah. It now, was the best. In a lot of these, obviously with Kristen Wiig and Melissa, you guys all go back to the Groundlings together, right? Yeah. It, me, Melissa, Kristen, Annie Mumolo, uh, who else? Michael Hitchcock, who was also in the movie, Jordan okay. Black, Jillian Bell was in that. Like a lot of a lot of Groundlings kids. But the weird thing was is we, me and Kristen met at Melissa McCarthy's apartment for a bridal shower. <gasps> Is that the weirdest thing? That's Like perfect. back in 2000, 2001, and Maya Rudolph was there. Oh, what? And it was like, oh my God, there's Maya. She's on Saturday Night Live. So yeah, it was like just a weird, um, I don't know what you'd call it, weird coincidence that yeah. we all met at a fucking wedding shower perfect That's crazy so That's did perfect. you have to audition for that or was yeah it, you did yeah so we you know it took a long time for that movie to get on its feet so the original table read was in 2007 and i was in on the original table read three years go by and i get a text from annie mumolo saying yeah we're it's it's going so you know we're, we're going to be calling you into audition. So I went in on a Saturday. My grandpa had just died. It was, oh, I was no. not feeling funny at all, but I thought I'm just going to go do it because they invited me to do it. That's really nice. I can't believe they thought of me. I'm going to go because they asked me. So I went, I did some improv, blah, blah, blah. And then I got called back, which I thought that is so nice. How nice that they let me come back. <laughs> and there was all kinds of other people in the room that were way more famous. And I was like, well, again, here I am. It is what it is. I'll just go in and do my thing. And then the third time, same thing. There's all kinds of people. Holy cow. I'm like, there is was no there, way. Was, it's was there a moment for me like, today? Come on, guys. I Ever that, ever sort of that feeling? Or you were like, I'm just going to fucking keep trudging forward with this. Like if they keep asking me to show up, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep That's showing up, but I'm not going to get it. Oh my God. So that just sort of took all the pressure off. Right. You know, and it is, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. So then when I got it, they did that thing where, you know, Annie and, and Kristen got on the phone with me and they said, we really want to thank you for auditioning. And we know you did the best you could type of thing. And, um, you know, you were really funny, but I think we want you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you bitches. You, God. But, um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that was really fun. How much and of that then, was improvised? Like, I always feel like the line where you say you could break your kid's sheets over your leg was yours. Yes. That, you know, we did a lot of improvising when we were workshopping everything. Mm. So we would go to Judd's office and he would just turn on a camera and we would start spitting things out. And that was a story that someone told me <sighs> about their son a long time ago. And I thought, I'm going to use that one day. It's brilliant. Like they brilliant. To play. So we all had kind of stuff like that. And then... Um, so when we would do the movie, we would do we would do it as scripted and then do like 
fun runs where we all just said whatever the hell we wanted and whatever was funniest that they could string together, they would use that. Okay. But then on the DVD, there's like three hours of outtakes. Like there's a whole other movie, like entire characters that had to go away. Oh my God. Oh, well, now we gotta go get the DVD. Let's get it yeah. and watch it and drink and watch all the outtakes and characters yeah. that I didn't but, get. Oh, I love so that. Like, Paul Rudd was cut out. <gasps> um, lots of people were cut out. The movie was just too damn long. Oh, that's... <laughs> you know? But um, yeah, there's a lot of outtakes. A lot of really funny Brilliant. stuff. Brilliant. Amazing. You wanted to ask less about the... Uh, the bathroom scene. Oh, well, what a, I mean, just the yes. bathroom, when you all get so sick. I mean, yeah. what was that well, like? <laughs> listen, we've all been to those bridal shops <laughs> yes. where everything is so precious and you yes. don't want to touch anything. So to me, like, that was not an original scene. That was something that was added in later by boys. Um, <laughs> and it was... Listen, it was disgusting, but you, you can't deny it was pretty damn funny. Brilliant. It was girls, fucking amazing. Girls trying not to shit themselves. Oh or my God. I mean, it's one of the funniest things in the world. It like, truly we've is. all been somewhere where we're just like sweating through. 100%. The pain. I yeah. have, I mean, just peeing. You've been places where yeah. just the peeing, the shitting is a whole other level. Yeah. <laughs> Peed in a bathtub or a sink because <laughs> that was the only choice. Oh, you yeah. gotta, you gotta go. Yeah. Anyways, exactly. please, let's play some. Let's do some eighties. Yeah. Have so you, okay, I have a bunch of eighties questions for you. Um, because girls. by the way, I listened to your show with Cedric, and your knowledge of Prince albums was astounding. Come on, I mean, yeah. but could you believe that he was at Paisley Park? His one whole, of the that whole show was spectacular. And by the way, and we need to plug we we need to plug your show again. Um, oh, be, before right, for our three out. viewers who are gonna make sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> you anyway. stop it. You stop it. Pretty soon we're gonna have thousands. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. It's hard to build a, a pod. It, it takes hard, time, it right? Takes time. You gotta you gotta yeah. be in it for the long haul. We just had this conversation two days ago yeah, because yeah. and I are very similar in that we can have such like, all right, we got the mojo, we're gonna go, we're gonna go. And then I don't know what happens, but it's just that, that energy sort of like peters off and we're like- right. We're quitters is what she's trying to say. Quitters. We can uh -uh. quit. No, don't yeah. quit, don't quit. Agree. A lot of podcasts fail after the 10th episode, they just give up. Yes. Because a lot of people will have like a big debut episode and then it peters out. Yep. But it's it's that, um, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yep. Agreed. You keep doing it and people will find you. Agreed. Yeah, and we, and Lisa and I agreed. We listened to you and Di Fernando and it sounds like it, it's, I'm like, this is exactly what, like, just shit. You wanted to sit around with your best friend and yeah. talk about a bunch of shit. Yeah. And, and especially people now, that. people like that. Yeah. yeah. People need that comfort of, you know, having friends around them and, you know, I don't know. No, you're right. I don't, don't give up. Don't give up. He's give an amazing, 50 episodes at yes, least. He's an minimum. stylist, by the way. And I saw, I think he styled you. I, I pulled up yesterday a People magazine yes. where you literally, you're like a cross between Goldie Hawn and Kate uh, and Hudson, Kate, her daughter. I couldn't tell. I was like, I don't know which one she is. She's one of them. Oh my you God. Look, I'm going to pass that along. I think he did that. He's, he's an amazing art director and stylist. And um, we have only known each other for a year. But, oh, the, but I met him and I was like, we were friends in a past I life. was just going to say, you know wow. what? You know when you connect with someone and it's yeah. not in this lifetime. It comes from a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like like we're siblings we had mm -hmm. to have been siblings or something but like i love him 
I adore but him. I love too that he sees you, like he yes. sees you and how not just who you are as a person, but he, you know, Leslie and I w- were talking yesterday about how beautiful you are and oh, how no. interesting it is that you're a character actress. No, Wendy, you're so you're very like, nice. No, oh, and I know it's hard right. to take. I'm just going to sit here with my squad. <laughs> Oh. You did a little squishy squash. No, we were literally, we were looking at all the photos of you and then that People Magazine one popped. I was like, oh my God, it's, you look gorgeous. But you it's because he sees you. Yeah. Like he really sees like who you are and, and it came through so much in his pictures. So that's oh, the cool I'm gonna pass. A, I'm going to pass that along. He's gonna Let him know. All right, 80s questions. Yes. First concert. Yes. Sparks. Do you remember the sparks? I've got angst in my pants. <laughs> no. You know that if you were a K, if you listen to KROQ in the Oh, 80s, I was more of a Kiss FM girl. <laughs> Me too. Oh, yeah. wow. It wasn't hip enough to be K- KROQ. Okay, so do you remember um, that song? I want to go to cool places with yeah. you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that was cool places tonight. Jane Wheedlin from the Go Go. Yes. Yep. I forget the guy's name, but he was half of Sparks. Okay. 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 So, uh, Sparks. so Sparks. Yeah. You, you'll, you'll look them up later and you'll know who they are. You I'm going them. to for sure. And now that song's mm-hmm. going to be in my head. Oh, what yeah. posters were on your wall? Uh, okay. There was a poster of kittens. Okay. Huge. <laughs> Amazing, consistent. Right. But then there was Adam Ant. <gasps> yes. Um, Lamal from Kaja Goo Goo. Oh my Duran God. Duran. Um, Rick Springfield. Uh, Matt Dillon. Oh, that she you just answered question. another question of mine. Because <laughs> I was going to say Rob Lowe or Matt Dillon. And for, yes. it's, it's Matt Dillon for me. Yeah. Oh, um, I love it. C. Thomas Howell, you know, all of the outsiders. All of the outsiders. Yes. Yeah. So you would get Tiger Beat magazine and you would pull out, you yep. know, I, my walls were covered. Amazing. I love yeah. it. Who was your favorite Duran? Um, now that's going to be a toss up. Okay. Because, you know, I love Simon, mm-hmm. but John mm-hmm. gets me feeling twitchy. So did Nick. <laughs> So did Andrew and Roger. P.S. Yes. Have you seen their documentary on Showtime? No. Yeah. Called There Is Something You Should Know. No. Oh. I have to write that. Get your life. There is something so you should know. I cannot know. wait. Yeah. I can I love because I love uh well, I love documentaries, but yeah. Okay, did you see them when they were at the Hollywood Bowl a little while ago? Um, hello, yes, I did, five years ago. Yes. I was in the front, I was in the front. Someone got a picture of me, cause you know, he was giving Instagrammable moments. Yeah, oh yeah. He was traveling very slowly across yes. the stage. And I was like an arm's distance away and like, oh my God. Now, sidebar, here's a weird story. <laughs> okay. My. One of my best friends growing up, his name is Randall Slavin. He is a celebrity photographer now. But we were just little nerds in Long Beach, you know, listening to Duran Duran back in the day. This was also on one of my podcasts. Yeah, you talked to your episodes. I was just saying, you talked to your sister. She went to the prom with him, I guess. Yes. Oh, good. You are good. I think this is episode 10, but he talks about, he was throwing himself a, a party at the Chateau Marmont and- there's a knock on the door. He opens it. It's Duran Duran. They're saying, can we join your party? Ours upstairs is not great. Stop <laughs> it right now. So they, no Duran Duran crashes his party. And later on, he's called to um, photograph them. <gasps> like they know each other now. At that concert, Randall, I mean, we paid a lot of money for these seats and I guess he ran into Nick Rhodes at a restaurant or something who said, oh, text me, I'll get you tickets. So Randy was there, of course, we had better seats. And he says, we'll go backstage after. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. So we tried to go backstage and we were back there and I was like, this is too real, we gotta go. (laughs) 
We got to go. I don't want to see anything I don't want to see. You don't want to meet your heroes. I ended up, the night is up here. I don't want to end down here. I don't want to, let's leave on a high note. I got to yep. get out of here. So that's what we did. So you I, never met them? Never met them. I love it. No. But I'm still um, holding space for that to happen. <sighs> so, I love it. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a Durrani. Amazing. Love their um, new music. Favorite 80s movie? I will always stop what I'm doing to watch a John Hughes movie. Yeah. Okay. Any of the John Hughes movies. Of um, course. Ferris Bueller is just nothing but good news. I love it. 16 Candles. And by the way, we have had Anthony Michael Hall on the Goldbergs. Oh, I haven't um, gotten there. I haven't. Worked yeah. with them last week. Oh. It was delightful. Um, Did he, because he couldn't, he pulled the, and it wouldn't go on. The, the lamp, the lamp from Breakfast Club. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, See, Breakfast Club's my fave. I just always I think of that. Love, oh. Yeah, oh, but I love it. Although my kids, my daughter loves to watch Ferris Bueller over and over. It's and so over. good. It's so, so good. good. It's and your so parody good. of it on the Goldbergs was, that was another. Oh, thank you. Okay, that now just a, a few quick fire ones. These are either ors. Okay. Ready? Okay. Molly Ringwald or Ali Sheedy? Molly Ringwald. Boy George or George Michael? <gasps> George Michael. <laughs> Although... I love Boy George. I figured you would. I do love Boy George, and they still put on a good show. I see them whenever they're in town. Oh, but that's I, awesome. And that's yeah. the, what's her face? The housewife from Beverly Hills. Uh, Dorit. Husband, Dorit. Well, there's that, but you know. Right. I, you, you, ignore you ignore that part. I ignore that part. Uh, two more questions. Rad or tubular? Rad. And day glow or lace? Lace. Yeah. 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 Love it. <laughs> I knew you'd have answers for all of those. Yeah, it, it didn't even take me any time. Like, no, it's just all it right not. at the surface. It's right? amazing. We're all yeah. such 80s girls. I love it. It's the well, best. You, you, you do, you're a big Bravo trashy television person, right? I was, but this year I had to tap out. Okay. Really? I had to tap out. After that fight on Potomac. Mm, haven't that, succeeded. I don't I watch Potomac, Potomac or Atlanta. Okay. What happened um, on the fight? It went on way too long. It was violent. Oh. Monique really? and Candace. And it was like, how, how are they, A, allowing this to continue mm -hmm. and showing it? This is exploitive. It is anyway. Right, right. But these women wouldn't be fighting if, if your camera show on. didn't exist. Sure, oh. no, it's encouraged like, and it's staged it's and it's- totally, and, and there was a time when, wow, I loved it. I would get into it. Like I know way too much about, about those women and, and I feel gross that I do. <laughs> You're, and you're speaking our language. Yeah, like- And yet I'm still tuned in because it is like the, it, some of this, you know, mindless, trashy, although be it contrite television, right. just sort of numbs my brain and I'm entertained by it. I can always I fast forward to stuff too. I sure. have to say the new Salt Lake City Housewives, I have tried three times now. I, I cannot even, it's so, yeah. it's as if they went and literally plucked these women. They found the women who had had the most plastic surgery. Oh. And said, all right, listen, we're gonna give you some money. We want you to sort of make up some lives and buy some clothes and buy yeah. whatever. And let's see if we can figure this out. I find it so, anyways, so turned Listen, off. Listen, no, yeah. And, and right now, like, I'm under enough stress. Yeah. I don't need to right. stress myself out watching no. these manufactured fights. No. From stupid people. But I do have to tell you, I was watching um, Real Housewives of the OC yesterday. And what made me laugh so hard was in the middle of an episode when they go, bum, bum, March 13th, production stopped. <laughs> and they made it as though COVID only happened to these women. Exactly. Yes. And then all of a sudden yes. they're filming themselves and it's like, I don't know what to do anymore. And yeah. I was both horrified and so delighted at yeah. the narcissism of the entire, the, the entire good, show. Because you're right. like two episodes behind me. 
Oh, oh, okay. Oh my God. It made me laugh hysterically. Yeah. Oh, and I totally get that. I just like, I hit a threshold. I get it. I can, I can listen to a recap. I love a good recap. Sure. (laughs) But I don't want to invest the time. No, I get get it a hundred percent. Yeah. I think everybody has their fill. Like it, it's going to, it gets to a point where you're like, and now I'm done. It's like deleting an app on your phone. Like I can't play that game anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I feel like we've kept you for so long and we could, as always, continue to continue to continue to continue (laughs) continue to talk and ask you questions because you're so much fun to hang out with. But yeah, we're going to let you go. But, 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 okay. uh, So your podcast, Generation Ripe, I found it on generationripe.com. Are there other platforms where you would want people to look for you? It is on every major podcast platform. So I think we're on Audible now too, oh, but we're on you know, are. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, whatever, you know, wherever you podcast, wherever you find it podcasts, should be there. Yeah, and, cool. and if, you, there. if you just wanna listen to it on YouTube, you can do that as well. And to be honest, Wendy, the reason that I'm plugging it so hard is because listening to you guys did, it's what you explained. It did feel very comforting. I was listening to it um, while I was cooking several nights in a row and you guys are really good at, it just felt like I was listening to to friends and it it was really awesome, awesome stuff to listen to. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So, so go listen kids, because you can see when, oh, one last question. Uh Uh-huh. What, because I know you've done a lot of, um, of smaller films uh-huh. that maybe don't get the, the do they are do. So, <laughs> so w- give us a movie that's very important to you that you loved doing and that you're passionate about that we should all watch. Well, on Christmas Day, um, a movie comes out called Sylvie's Love. Ooh. Takes place in Harlem, like in the 50s and 60s. Ooh. And I am in that as um, kind of like a Julia Childs type TV personality. Fun. That stars um, Tessa Thompson and I, God, I'm going to fuck this name up. Namdi Asmua. Okay. Carrie Washington's delightful husband. Oh, yeah. Um, So it's like, it's all jazz and romance and gorgeous outfits and all kinds of fun things. Fun. So that'll be a good one. That did very well at Sundance. Amazing. Um, I actually heard about that because I don't know. Yeah. I was listening to something with her and I, he was an athlete, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was a football player. A football player who's turned supposedly an amazing actor. I love wow. that. Just a dreamy, dreamy actor. And then there's another film called Blush that, is more of a like dramatic thing for me, but that, I mean, talk about indie, like three week shoot, no permits, just guerrilla shoot. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but that that is kind of a cool one. That's on Vudu and I, it might be on Hulu right now. I'm not sure, but okay. that one's making the rounds. So, um, Sylvie's love and blush and blush. blush yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Love it. So thank you for asking that question. Of course. Wendy, <laughs> thank you. Like thank genuinely you. so much oh, for being God. here. It was such a pleasure to have and to just sit and talk to you and just kibitz about whatever. Well, thank you for being so sweet to me and me and my dirty hair will. No, you and your dirty hair, you're and... fucking hot. You are. Ah, you're talking about yourself. No. <laughs> You're looking in a mirror. <laughs> All right. You have to let yourself out because it's the most awkward thing ever. And okay. uh, we enjoy watching people leave. We All right. It. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave and I'm going to so keep much. saying goodbye. Bye, you guys. Bye, Bye. Wendy. Bye. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Here I go. Say bye. This is the best. Bye, Wendy. I'm going to fucking leave. I love it's it. So Don't great. leave. <laughs> We knew, we knew I that mean, that was just going to be so much fun. Phone number, so make sure that we can all be friends. Yeah, I'm going to email her and say, "Listen, bitch, we you, we need all oh, of your personal information." Cocktails. Yeah, we'll drive to Long Beach to take her out for coffee when this is all over. One hundred percent. All right, all right, Les. I got nothing else. I got nothing else too. That was so much fun. I think it's a. 
I want, I had a couple more eighties questions I could have asked, but oops. But, um, <laughs> sorry. I, sorry. I kind of took that part over. I apologize. Oh, don't even worry about it. I was going to jump in with the, with the lace or the day glow, but, um, you were so good. It was all good. Thank you. I loved it. It was good. Um, sorry to always give you a hard time about the, uh, school stuff. I don't know why that's such oh, a hot, please, don't hot worry. button topic for me. I, don't worry. I'm not really apologizing. <laughs> You're good. All right, I'm going to go see how my children are doing and talk about college. Oh, perfect. Yes, exactly. All right. I love you, Last Talk to you soon. Love you. Bye. Oh, oh no, not bye. What? We, we have a show. Yeah, we love our show. Yeah, we're doing yes. a show. <laughs> so. oh God. We're so caught up in Wendy. We're like, oh. It's okay, true. No. I feel like I'm in love. Yeah, do the plug. She's, okay. she's hot. She's hot, but she's also like, she's just... You can just tell she's yummy. She's just a person yeah. you want to be around. 100%. She's delightful. Okay, guys, like, subscribe. Please be a part of our community. Oh, and this is a very important thing. We have a Facebook page now, totally <laughs> dedicated to fans of this show. It's called uh, the Leslie and Lisa After Party. Um, please find us on Facebook and join because once we have a certain amount of, um, people in our group, we're going to start doing some special stuff with you, you guys. So come be a part of that, uh, like, and subscribe on YouTube, sign up for notifications. And please, the reason you really should, uh, sign up for that Facebook page is because we want you to have a voice in this. We want yeah, you to ask us want, questions. Yeah. We want a community that has questions and wants to be involved. Um, you know, it's so funny. I was listening. You're the one who always has to say like, subscribe, do all this kind of stuff because I feel like such a social media moron. That's all anyway, right. Okay. You're I'm not sure. a moron in so many other important ways. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Les. Listen, have a lovely day. You too. Um, sexy shoulder lady, and I'll see you on the flip side. See you on the flip side. Bye, Les. Bye, babe.